Steve Jobs, rest his soul, was the man. He had this unbelievable ability where he could criticize whatever he wanted and still be loved by millions. He especially enjoyed poking some fun at his main competitor, Microsoft. He was quoted in 1996 as saying, The only problem with Microsoft is they just have no taste. I don't mean that in a small way. I mean that in a big way, in the sense that they don't think of original ideas and they don't bring much culture into their products. I have no problem with their success. They've earned their success for the most part. I have a problem with the fact that they just make really third-rate products. Steve Jobs was a creator, a visionary, but he still understood the importance of competition. Unlike most common definitions, competition does not have to have a winner and a loser. What competition must have is a creator. Competition is the fundamental driver in both performance and innovation. Competition makes you creative. Our whole U.S. economic system is based off of the idea of competition. Businesses needed to fuel their ideas. Let's go back to Mr. Jobs as an example. Steve Jobs and Apple need Microsoft to keep them creative. They don't want to make a product that is the same as Microsoft. They want to make one that is original and better. It's always been that way for Apple. Even back in 1984, Jobs was saying they were gambling on their vision and they would rather do that than make Me Too products. Let some other companies do that. For them, it's always the next dream. One of the best examples of this next dream competition was when Apple wanted to enter the phone market. They didn't want to just copy what had already been successful. They wanted to revolutionize what a successful phone was. Just take a look at what phones looked like before and after the introduction of the iPhone. Apple didn't just want to beat the competition. They wanted to have the product that would redefine the phone industry, and they did that. Competition makes you creative. Sports were born on the natural human tendency to compete. John Madden is one of the most creative leaders in sports history. There are several career decisions Madden made that show his creative and innovative mind that led to his great success. John Madden, driven by competition in the NFL, brought a new philosophy of coaching in contrast to the button-down conservative taskmaster. But his greatest innovation for football wasn't even on the field. It was in the press box. With Madden's mind being so competitive, he started noticing the slacking approach of his fellow analysts. Madden began to outshine the other speakers through homework. He spent the week watching film to better understand the game. On game day, Madden believed viewers did not want to be entertained, but they wanted to see the game. He started announcing the plays that were being run and what should be expected of the plays to come. Madden's competition left indelible marks on the field through his creative coaching style and off the field for his innovative commentary. When determining if head-to-head -head competition increases the effectiveness of an athlete, we should take a look at the performance of a professional athlete in a situation of pressure. In the Beijing Olympics, 100 and 200 meter winner Usain Bolt credited his record-setting win to the head-to-head -head competition that he had with another competitor. He created a scenario in his mind where he imagined the track being one-on-one -on -one battle where losing was not an option. In his zone, Usain has the ability to repress any negative thoughts and focus at the crucial task at hand. This zone, created by the mind and prompted by the competition, combine the balance of excitement, awareness, and focus on high-level performance. Competition makes you creative. To find the clearest example of innovative competition, we need to go back about 50 years. The space race was the scientific branch of the Cold War between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Each country wanted to be the first to launch a satellite, send a human to space, and land on the moon. On October 4, 1957, the Soviets launched Sputnik, and the space race was officially on. Instead of launching their own version of Sputnik, the United States created something better, a satellite that could actually be used to transmit live communications. But the Soviets, they had something bigger planned. In 1961, they became the first country to send a human into space. NASA was not pleased that the Soviets had made such large advances, so they created the Apollo 11. One of the most famous dates in history, July 21, 1969, was the day that Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. But 
Not to be outdone, the Soviets launched the first space station just two years later. The United States and the Soviet Union never tried to create something that would equal or match the other's invention. They always tried to create something better. Without the competition for the space race, we may still be trying to send someone to the moon. Did the space race have a winner and a loser? Nope. In fact, in 1975, the two countries came together for the first joint mission to space. They each used the technologies that they had created over the past 15 years to create the International Space Station. Competition makes you creative. Competition advances humankind as a whole, not just in business, science, or sports. It is what makes people come up with and try new things. We instinctively want to become better. We want the most innovative thing out there. We want to be innovative, and that leads to performance at the top level. But that doesn't mean we necessarily win or lose. We just create. Competition makes you creative.